सर मेरा ख्याल है कॉम को जगाने का वक्त आ गया है इनको मत जगाओ ये किसी जरूरी काम से सो रहे हैं ये पाकिस्तान की जो मौजूदा सूरत हाल है जो करंट सिनारी है इसके ऊपर इंटरनेशनल मीडिया रिपोर्ट्स पाकिस्तान की सिचुएशन के ऊपर काफ़ी ज़्यादा असर अंदाज होती हैं उन्हीं में से एक रिपोर्ट न्यूयॉर्कर की थी जिससे मैं आज के प्रोग्राम का दोबारा आगाज़ करना चाहूँगा जिसमें कहा गया कि अमरीकन स्पेशल जो फोर्स हैं इन सिचुएशन ऑफ म्यूटनी और क्राइसिस पाकिस्तान के जो एटमी असासे हैं उनकी तहफ़ के लिए आगे बढ़ कर कोई पाकिस्तान को सिक्योरिटी प्रोवाइड कर सकती हैं ये रिपोर्ट स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट पाकिस्तानी आईएसपीआर और हुकूमत की जानब से तीनों जानब से इसको रद्द किया गया लेकिन जो हर्ष हैं जो इस रिपोर्ट के ऑथर हैं उनका क्लेम यह है कि तरदीद आ रही है तो आए लेकिन ये रिपोर्ट के कंटेंट्स जो हैं वो करेक्ट हैं दुरुस्त हैं तो आज मैं प्रोग्राम का आगाज इसी बात से करना चाहूँगा सीमोर सीम और हर्ष इज गोइंग टू ज्वाइन अस फ्राम वॉशिंगटन मिस्टर हर्ष थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस Uh, I would like to start with your comments regarding that uh, Joint Special Operations Command and that Special Operation Group, which is uh, specially meant to take care of Pakistani nuclear assets. Where is the location? Where is the, where this group is based right now? I I really don't know. It's a it's a very secret unit, and uh, whether it's uh, it's it's it, uh, uh, these are the kind of people that are, are live undercover. In other words, they don't walk around in uniform. And so I don't know. All I know is that they're capable, whether they uh, uh, of coming very quickly to a, in a crisis, and they're not there to act against the government. You understand? Uh, the I, understanding was that in case of a problem. I I I heard your I heard your comments on one of uh, one of the news channels I think it was Al Jazeera uh, where you said I am talking about two different groups one uh, one group that you have indicated in your report which was uh, uh, trying to capture that false alarm that missing nuke which which was aborted in Dubai but on the other group you said that group is probably already in Pakistan maybe in Islamabad and maybe in US embassy Um, but as you see, I, as I said, probably I don't really know. My assumption is they're very close, as they have to be, in case of a crisis. But, but they actually don't know. Those units never, you know, they're very much undercover, as I said. But your assumption uh, is that group is already in Pakistan. This is what you said. Um, it could very well be. It could be assigned to the embassy. It could be uh, some members of it could be assigned. It could be like this other group I mentioned, the one that came from America. It could be uh, on short notice that in case of a crisis they get together. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, um, uh, we went. Uh, this is a serious undertaking in the sense that uh, the United States um, uh, is most anxious to, uh, in case of a crisis, uh, to be uh, able to help out, and that was the uh, idea. The idea was it was there to uh, provide extra security if needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Hesh, when you talk about that uh, false story regarding missing nuke, who made that call? Who made that call that there is a missing nuke in Pakistan? Go uh, get it. It's really, um, it's not fair to ask me to go beyond what I wrote. Um, um, the, the call obviously came from the American intelligence community, and it was obviously based on uh, information that turned out uh, on subsequent checking not to be reliable. That does happen an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And you have also mentioned your meeting with General Pervez Musharraf and President Asif Zardari. Uh, when you say in your report that a virtual look was given to the American community regarding our uh, arsenal, their designs, uh, warheads, and things like that, have you cross-checked it from General Musharraf and Asit Zardari? Um, um, you mean about specifics? When you talk about giving virtual look to the Americans of our nuclear arsenal? No, no, about specifics. Uh, uh, certainly, it's pretty well known what happened after 9/11. Mm -hmm. After 9/11. There's been. Um, I'm, I'm, I know I've written about it earlier. Uh, it's it's known that uh, the United States uh, was very active in supplying funds and help for Pakistan um, and its nuclear facilities to improve its command and control. It's uh, the ability to make sure that when the uh, the authorities want to fire a missile, that it's going to work. That they that their chain of command is correct. These are all the kinds of things. That was done uh, after 9/11 mm. in the fall of 0102. This is done directly uh, with the United States, um, and you know there's some legal problems mm -hmm. because your uh, Pakistan is not a member of the uh, of the proliferation regime. You haven't signed the NPT, so we can't do that much legally. We can do nothing legally mm -hmm. to help a country that hasn't signed the web, uh, the agreement, the non-proliferation treaty agreement. But within the limits of the law, there was a lot of help given. 
Mr. Hirsch, when, when you say, uh, Mr. Hirsch, when you say that group is probably already in Pakistan, in recent past, we have seen many reports in Pakistan in newspaper regarding presence of U.S. Marines in Islamabad and different locations. There was a report regarding presence of U.S. private security companies. You are also saying these this special operation task force works undercover. So there is a strong probability, probably these groups are linked with that security companies which are already working in Islamabad and adjoining areas. Well, you just, I just, you know, there's no way you're going to make me say something I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. I don't know how they operate. Uh, they're the, one of the most uh, efficient of the uh, special forces groups we have, and they generally work undercover. Um, and so I, I can tell you, I'm, I'm, as I wrote, and uh, um, uh, that this unit has been uh, involved in uh, these kind of activities, training for this kind of activity in case of a crisis. Uh, but how they are, where they are, and how they are, um, is it's impossible for me to know. And if I did know, it would be very, very secret. And it would be the last thing that any, as a loyal American, I really wouldn't want to say. Because, um, uh, you know, this is the unit that, as I say, is, uh, is operating undercover. The fact is that they have been training to help out in case of a crisis. And uh, this has uh, been presented to your leadership, your military leadership, as something they can call on. Whether or not okay. uh, uh, Tiani and others, your generals, would ever actually want to rely on the Americans is another issue. I don't know that. Uh, but I do know the American position is that we've made this offer, and it's understood that uh, these troops are there in case, in case uh, there's something that gets out of control. Uh, Hush, one last question. You are saying, as a loyal American, you would not would not like to divulge that information. Uh, if but, I had it, uh, okay. I don't have it. But what is your reaction to that statement, which was made by General Pervez Musharraf, that we have a underground tunnel system and all the nuclear arsenal has been shifted there? Americans would not be able to get it because there are ripples in our National Assembly yesterday over his statement. Is it well, against, I, I is it against the national loyalty? Musharraf talked about the underground tunnels in response to me talking about it. Okay. In other words, uh, I had learned earlier about him, and I was, uh, it was actually, a, a, as you know, one major reason to dig tunnels is not only for security, but also to keep us, the American satellite and intelligence community, from knowing what's going on. You know, there's not an awful lot of love between um, uh, the Pakistanis, uh, many Pakistanis and the United States. I, I, it, I'm not talking about personally. There's a great deal of affection for Americans both ways. But... In terms of our policies, in terms of our government, there's often a lot of difficulty. But Michelle was responding to what I said. Uh, I mentioned the tunnels, and he, he said they were also there as a function. Okay. Uh, they're deep enough so they can protect themselves from any uh, sort of attack from India. Thank you very much, Mr. Harris. Seymour Harsh, who wrote a story in New Yorker about the Pakistani nuclear arsenal.